so now we move on to the next uh, the next game, which is a, a preview of Norwich City on New Year's Day, and we are joined by Connor Southwell from the the Pinkin to help preview the Norwich game coming up on New Year's Day. Uh, I think you're the first repeat guest that we've had on as well, um, which is good. So thanks for um, thanks for not blacklisting us and coming back. Um, so uh, Connor, from the outside, Norwich City. It's been a very up and down season. Started well. Thought you looked very good at St Mary's um, in, a, in an attacking sense. Anyway, um, it's kind of fallen away since. Um, I seem to remember that when when I spoke to you last time, or when we spoke to you last time, I thought you looked a decent side on paper. I like the sort of like experience running through the side, and you yourself weren't so sure hmm. at that point. Um, so basically, how is, how has it been this season? No, well, well, first and foremost, thanks for having me back on. I think I'm one away from a hat trick ball now, so that's uh, that's that's nice. Um, how's it been? I mean, how long have you got? Really, we we could sit here for an hour uh, with, with me dissecting all of it, but yeah, it's um, it's not been great. I think that's 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 probably what, what I would say. I think um, Norwich and probably David Wagner more more widely are very streaky and. Uh, I think you've kind of seen that within their results. They started really well and, and the mood after that sort of opening eight games or so was really positive. And I think it was, OK, yeah, this might work. And all of those experienced signings might add all of the elements that Norwich City have, have been missing. Then they had a terrible autumn where they 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 won two and 11 or, or, or one in 10. Um, there were four straight defeats within that. Um, and David Wagner seemed to be really on the on the brink, really, of, of, of losing his yeah. job. Um, and then the last sort of, 10 games or so they had one defeat in eight which kind of rescued him a little bit and stabilized their season pushed them to have been two points to the the top six and then it's it's been a really poor festive period where they've been beaten by by West Brom and Millwall and, and deserve to lose both games so um and it's worth adding sort of over that eight game period I think I think they beat QPR Huddersfield Sheffield Wednesday Bristol City who were at that stage right at the start of the kind of Liam Manning experiment and 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 Cardiff before the international break where, where they didn't perform very well but had a really good kind of 10 minute spell so the performances haven't really altered they, they haven't been playing very well now for a significant period of time probably really since August and and that run at the start of the campaign so um yeah it's um it's been difficult. It's been a difficult season, and uh, I think a lot of supporters and 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 probably Monday's game feels quite important for for David Wagner because I think if Norwich produced the level of performance that we've seen, particularly over the last two games, but probably over longer than that, then then I think fans are going to be very quick to to vent their frustration um, at him and uh, at the powers that be for for keeping him in post. What's the sort of general feeling towards sort of David Wagner at the moment? Uh, uh, you know, is there a, a Wagner out hashtag kicking around at the moment, or is or are you know are people not quite there yet in general? Yeah, I, I think Wagner out was trending last night for, <laughs> for for quite a period of time. So yeah, I, look, I, I think uh, and and it, you can never speak for all fans, but the feeling I get from the majority of supporters is is that they they want a change, and I, I think they wanted a change. Um, sort of towards the end of that really bad run in the autumn where Norwich were, weren't producing performances and uh, and results were really poor as well. And and uh, they had kind of back-to-back defeats against Sunderland. He, he looked absolutely broken after that game, to be honest with you. And I think sort of from in, in the job that I do and speaking to him afterwards, I think there was a feeling of, oh, yeah, this this feels like it's probably it. And it wasn't. Uh, and then they lost to, to Blackburn uh, 3-1 at home. And, and that was a, a terrible day, really. And, and that definitely felt like it was it. And it wasn't. Um, uh, and then the, the Cardiff game came and, and again, he's, he's kind of been aided a little bit because Norwich have had a change in sporting director. So Stuart Webber, who was at the club for seven years, um, has left and he's been replaced by Ben Napper, who was loans manager at Arsenal. But they had this kind of weird handover period where Webber was still in the role and Napper wasn't quite in the role. And that kind of spanned this autumn period. And because of fans frustrations uh, towards Wagner, sort of namely, they accelerated Napa's arrival and, and, and Weber's departure. And, and since really his arrival, he's kind of been talking about the need for an assessment period. Um, but that assessment period has coincided with a, a run of one defeat in eight. So I, I don't think fans' views yeah. are, are on him have been shifted that much by the run of form that we saw, because as I said, the performances haven't haven't really changed. They've just been playing teams who are who are struggling rather than um, maybe teams who are slightly better. And you look at their record, they're, they're, they haven't beaten any side in the top six this season. And um, yeah, they're, they're struggling for, for consistency. And I think there there is kind of a debate at the moment. Is this squad just bang average? 
Or is there is this a coach not being able to get enough out of this group of players? And without changing the head coach, I don't think you, you can ever really find the answer to that. But it, it does feel like a, a group of Norwich City players that should be a lot closer to the, the top six than they are at the moment. Yeah, I mean, I, I assume the expectations at the start of the season were to, you know, playoffs at least and, you know, make a run at the top two if if possible. Uh, is this your second season in the Championship or third? Second, second. yeah. So are there still? I mean, so it's next year's the desperate one, isn't it? That's the um, that's the end of the parachute payments if it if it doesn't well, yeah, happen. It's, so. It's, so so this is this is the final year because Norwich obviously if you go um, oh yeah if you go up the then straight effect. down you only get two years. Yeah. So Norwich are yeah in their in their final year. So there is kind of a financial imperative to it, um, which adds to it, I guess. But but you're right. I think for to have kind of two years of, of parachute payments and uh, last year they finished 13th so in the bottom half essentially um, and this year I mean they're, they're, they're sat 13th again at, at this moment in time five points from the top six and have very mid-table numbers in terms of their results so to not be in around the top six for two for a season and a half essentially with parachute payments which most the majority of clubs at this level don't have I mean it's it's a failure isn't it there's, there's no real other way to dress it up yeah. Okay. On the pitch, um, when we played at St Mary's, Jonathan Rowe caused us yeah. all sorts of problems last time. Um, from what I remember, he was sort of largely excellent in the early part of the season, scored a lot of goals. Has that continued or has he sort of tailed off a bit, been injured, whatever? Um, anyone else particularly from an attacking sense to um, to look out for? I know, have you still got Ashley Barnes? Is he still there? <laughs> He is still there, yes, yeah. He is. Uh, he's still there and uh, and kicking, which is good in both senses of the word. Um, yeah, John, John Rowe is 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 the main one, really. Interestingly, he didn't start uh, on on Friday against Millwall because David Wagner has felt that he's not quite been at the level that maybe he needs to be. He he had a bit of a heel injury and he's come back from that. And even though he scored goals, scored one against Sheffield Wednesday, uh, obviously a double against Ipswich, which has uh, made him uh, even more popular than perhaps he was already. Um, his performances haven't been perhaps where they were. It's not been that great in possession. I mean, at Portman Road, he only had 15 touches of of the ball. and um, But yeah, to drop him completely felt a little bit... Um, Drastic. I think that's, yeah, that's bizarre. It's yeah. Ruben Stella's yeah. level management. That he's only yeah. scoring goals. Got ten or eleven this season. He's he's going to go to the Premier League for twenty million in the summer, regardless of what happens. To drop Correct. him because he hasn't been great in possession. It's bizarre. Correct. And and also to to drop him in favour of Onel Hernandez, who uh, hasn't scored a goal all season um, and yeah. hasn't scored at Carrow Road for four years, and and, and Christian Fashnacht, who's really <laughs> faded after a bright start as well, and. Uh, it, it, yeah, and, and that kind of maybe sums up where where Norwich are and why Norwich fans are so frustrated yeah. by David mm. Wagner at the moment. And it, it wasn't it, that wasn't the only change. I mean, he made a few changes. I think he made five changes on Friday, really, and um, also dropped Shane Duffy, who who has been in a pretty decent run of form, um, although not maybe had the best season, but wasn't in the matchday squad. Kenny McLean, who's mm. been playing as a centre back, kind of pushed into midfield, so he changed both of the centre backs, all of the front four. It was um, yeah, a really, really peculiar. Kind of, it yeah, sounds like a really a, peculiar a, situation. A man just throwing things at the wall and hoping some of it sticks. But uh, yeah. from a Saints perspective, though, the two-all draw with Ipswich was was massive for us, obviously, because I think it sort of started there. What could be a, a lengthy decline? I think they haven't won a game since up there. Saints have sort of made up seven or eight points on them, so that was a great result from our point of view. Yeah, you're welcome. Absolutely. <laughs> no, I'm not sure how it happened, but <laughs> that is it. well, I mean, I mean, if, if, if Ipswich on the on the run of form that they've been on in the last what year and a bit um, can't beat Norwich um, when Norwich are kind of in this in this sort of slump that they that they've been on, um, when are they ever going to beat them? Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. Fi- uh, Fifteen years since they've beaten you now. That that's right. Yeah. Mad. For- for 14 years and uh, I know that their, their sort of supporters have made a big play about Norwich fans overly celebrating the draw but it's not really about the draw it's about preserving the record and like you say it was <laughs> yeah. it was the record it was the fact that I think a lot of uh, people associated with Norwich probably went in that game thinking that they were going to get absolutely battered and that that, that record was going to go and mm. it's been a really dismal year and the fact it wasn't and it didn't I think um it's quite funny more than, more than more than anything else. Yeah, I, th- I think I think everyone gets petty when it comes to um, to local yeah. rivals. I mean, we never play ours, so it's uh, <laughs> so it's it's, it's uh, now I think it's perfectly excusable to be uh, to be petty about that. Um, Steve, it was a slightly mental four four draw last time. Um, 
we are obviously a better side now than we were then. Um, do you think, you know, we sh- we should win this, or is this a very much a, t- a tough game where a, a point would be decent? Um, I think it's one where, on paper, and I'm sure the bookies' odds will reflect this. On on paper, we should win. Um, we're we're, I mean, particularly we're a better defensive side now. Um, yeah, what is it? We've conceded. 10 i think in the last 15 games now maybe maybe even maybe even more games than that whereas we would conceded what 20 in our first nine so <laughs> it's yeah the the improvement at the back has has been stark um and going forward we're we're scoring the same amount if not more so um yeah i think we're we're in we're in good shape um but I think you you always kind of fancy that Nor- that Norwich away is a ground where we've not had a great record historically. Um, there's been some kind of trademark wins, so the that Locked insane fi- well that that five that five four one uh, back mm. in ninety back in ninety four ninety five. Oh, more time that. Um, yeah, bef- <laughs> way before your time, Al. <laughs> um, and I was speaking to lockdown the first game of um, yeah when, first, first, time, first game right? back first game back in yeah. in lockdown when when we won three 0 But again, mm. that was that was a Norwich side that was in the middle of a um, what was it fourteen to fourteen defeats on the bounce or something absolutely mental. Um, so I yeah I kind of don't really read too much into that into that one but yeah generally when when we've gone when we've gone to Carrow Road as equals um we've found it hard we don't we don't win there often um so I wouldn't be completely disappointed with a draw um I think we've as you say we've we've made up ground on uh made up loads of ground on Ipswich we've made up yeah. a little bit of ground on Leicester um over the period so we've done we've done some good work here and actually a point isn't isn't the worst thing possible um i th- but i think i mean the, the team will definitely be going there thinking we can win this um yeah. and you've then got that situation where where amanda is under pressure um if you're an away team that turns up and you crank up the pr- crank up the pressure even mm. more all of a sudden the players will start doing something stupid um there will be misplaced passes you'll get players feeling the pressure and you make mistakes and that's that's kind of the the ideal scenario for us is that we do do something good early on get get into the lead um force um force the atmosphere at Carrow road to to go downwards and then you're you've kind of got the got the control of the game and you've got kind of got Norwich exactly where you want them. And it's just it's then hopefully a case of seeing it through. And you you kind of once you've once you've got your your foot on their foot on their throats, you just keep pressing. That's that's the that's the theory. Um whether having had I mean obviously every, everybody's in the same boat, but having had these load of games in a short space of time, whether we've got the energy to do it for another 90 minutes. I think Rest and uh, Stewie yeah. and uh, Rebo will be in the Saints' favour in that regard. They'll be able to bring yeah. in basically a completely fresh midfield, um, which, which should help. Yeah, that was going to be my question to you, Alfie. Do you see yeah, that's, sort of like that's a, a, a Rebo, Downs, Stuart Armstrong? Well, there's Downs a question mark over Downs, right? So, yeah, so I mean, we, we don't know if um, Lynn Downs is going to be available yet. It's a third different illness um, this year, but it's what? It's a, it's a third or fourth game it? that he's missed for illness. That is a bit um, of a concern, it must be said. Yeah, it's a little bit of a concern. I think so. He, uh, Russell Martin hasn't ruled him out. He said that he might well be available, but he said that he's not going to take any risks um, with it. So that to me was a, a sort of a subtle Russell Martin size warning that he's not going to be available. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. He wasn't going to play against Warsaw anyway, so he would have had sort of 10, 11 days off from playing at that point. Um, and he's going to be seeing a nutritionist about it. But, you know, he ate, he ate um, <laughs> raw chicken liver at the start of the season. I think that's a um, mental thing to do. I think that has not served him well, um, as Russell Martin said. But it has been two different illnesses. So he missed Watford through flu, which a lot of the squad had. He was the worst affected. Um, and this one is a sort of digestive illness again as well. So it's not the same thing. Um, but it's a bit of a concern for sure. Yeah. Um, to you, Connor. I, um, we avoided this question last time. But you, of course, have one of our former players. It's a dangerous question for me to be asking. So, how is Angus Gunn doing these days? Fantastically well. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's been he's been brilliant this season actually, and and um, certainly Millwall on on Friday night made at least two 
free, maybe even saves that that, that prevented the, the scoreline being significantly worse than it has been. And, and actually, there, there was a spell um, that kind of coincided with Norwich's really poor run in the autumn, where he was injured, and they had to they had to play George Long, their, their, their deputy, and the drop in quality was was sizable. Really, basically, <laughs> any, yeah, anyone that shot from from anywhere, it was it was um, finding itself in in, in the net. So that that wasn't. Um, particularly favourable but yeah he's, he's, he's been excellent developing into a really good goalkeeper he's become a bit more rounded at Norwich I think uh, a criticism I always had of him is he wasn't that commanding never really kind of took crosses yeah. particularly well uh, there's been signs certainly in, in the last few months or so that he, he's a bit more willing to do that and uh, a bit, uh, whether that's because he's now kind of a bit more comfortable in his own skin as, as Norwich's first choice I don't know there was obviously for a long time here a real battle with Tim Krul that he kind of saw off, which I think was was massively important. And then obviously they, they moved Tim Krul on in, in the summer and that was a massive kind of show of confidence in him. But yeah, um, yeah I, I think he's, he's, he's uh, one of the best goalkeepers in, in this division at, at this moment in time, certainly in terms of, of, of shot stopping. Um, and actually, I think if Norwich don't get up this season, which is looking highly unlikely, he's he's going to have a year left on his uh, contract in, in, in the summer. Uh, and I'd be shocked if there wasn't Premier League interest because he's obviously now internationally recognised, particularly if he can go and have a really good um, Euros. I, I know his, his time with Southampton was, was pretty checkered and there was obviously the, the 9-0 defeat, but yeah, that, I think, I think he of... a lot of uh, car- a lot of praise for how he's kind of responded to that in his own personal career. And yeah. Um, he's shown a lot of resilience and I think at Norwich he's found a place where he's very comfortable to kind of rebuild himself and um, I think he now looks in my view a lot more confident and a lot more assured than he than he did when he came back to Norwich permanently a couple of summers ago. Yeah I'm, a, I'm actually pleased because in the I mean he yeah he was in goal for the as you said the the 9-0 defeat against Leicester and that would that would kill many people, especially goalkeepers. And he was, I think we forget how young he was at the time. I think I think he was only twenty one or something at the time. And uh, so, uh, so it's good that he's moved. Is he first choice for Scotland now? Yes. Yeah. Now, wow. Excellent. Excellent. I must stuff. say, um, I played in goal. I lost more than nine a couple of occasions. Didn't get. I'm still here. So. <laughs> okay. Um, we. Don't let people go without doing the um, without doing the prediction game. So um, Steve is <laughs> uh, hedged between us winning and a draw. So Steve, what what do you reckon? Call us to the mast. Um, yeah, I, I think yeah. If we get get an early goal, I think we we win it probably fairly comfortably. Um, it's just yeah, how we start the game is is key. Um, we're yeah, we're a better side than we than we were in August. And quite frankly, I think Norwich are a weaker side than they were in August. Um, so, yeah, 2 0 win. Good stuff. Alfie? Yeah, I think just looking at the last three um, Norwich results, they've all been 2 0. So I'm going to go for a clean sheet as well and go back to the 1 0 for Saints, obviously. Okay. Um, I hate how many times I end up agreeing with Steve and we're both crap and we're both bottom of the <laughs> prediction table that we do so I don't know how so I, yeah I'm going to go for a 2-0 a, a win as well I, for the same reasons um, I um, I think Norwich are in a difficult spot at the moment and uh, and we are obviously flying and, and whilst we all know that's going to end um, one day I, um, I, I don't see it ending Not in yet. this particular game given the players that we can bring back into the side um, and the extra energy we'll have. So, uh, yeah, two nil win for us as well. So, Connor, feel free to hmm. tell trend. us all to shut. Tell us all to <laughs> shut up and um, predict an Norwich three 0 win if that's what you want to do. <laughs> I'd, uh, I've, I've, uh, I'd have to be on something. I think to predict that. <laughs> I was going to. I was going to. I was going to agree with you, with you and Steve until you said you were bottom of the predictions league or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, we're terrible, but, mate. No, I, I mean, I mean to be fair, Russ, Russell Martin brought his Swansea side to uh, Norwich the tail end of last season and. Uh, they were comfortable three 0 winners that day, and, and basically played Norwich off the park. Um, very different because Norwich were in a, a dismal run of form, bit of an end of era, lots of players leaving. They're not much better now, to be fair. But uh, I, I think I think Southampton and, and, and Russell Martin that's steeped in narrative as, as it is with, with him coming back. But the the type of side that Southampton are technical, want loads of the ball. Um, they tend to be the teams that Norwich City struggle against for, from a defensive perspective, but also. Um, they are relatively okay in terms of transition. So I think they will pose some kind of threat. Um, that being said, I, I, I just don't like like you guys have painted, really. I think if Southampton get the first goal, it's um, it's going to be very, very difficult for Norwich because of the crowd and, and, and because of the way I think it could go. So um, 
I'm I'm going to go for a free one Southampton win. I think. Oh, yeah, are fun. you likely to? I mean, we struggle against teams that like Plymouth, who set up five four one basically against us. I mean, yeah, it's an away game, so you have got more license to do that. Are Norwich likely to do that in a home game? Uh, yes, it, it it won't be it won't be a back. F- Free, I wouldn't think famous last words, but he, he's not he's not really played a back three. He did for the second half of uh, the Boxing Day defeat to West Brom, but they were down to ten men. Uh, he, he likes to play a four four two as a general rule of thumb. So I, I think it will be kind of two blocks of four, quite rigid, and then they'll they'll look to try and uh, and play on transition. So yeah, I, I think it will be quite similar. But uh, Norwich, uh, I'm trying to be diplomatic, aren't the best defensively. So uh, when they try and defend, there, there are gaps and, and, and stuff to expose. Mm-hmm. So um, that shouldn't be an issue as, as long as uh, Southampton are, are creative enough and, and move the ball quickly enough, which from what I've seen, they definitely will do. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much, Connor, for coming on. Um, maybe we'll see you next season. Maybe we won't. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> <laughs> Depends. Um, yeah, so thanks very much for coming back on. and. Uh, after New Year's Day. Good luck for the uh, for the rest of the season. Thanks very much. Yep. Cheers, guys. Thanks for having me on. Good luck for the rest Cheers. of the season.